This is a short video about a Heathkit V7 vacuum tube voltmeter that I recently acquired. The V7 was the seventh in a long line of Heathkit VTVM models that started with the V1 in 1947 and continued with models up until the late 1980s. This model was offered from 1954 to 1961 and typically sold for US $24.50 equivalent to about 235 US dollars in today's money. I've made a longer YouTube video on the similar IM18 that covers a lot more background on Heathkit VTVMs. So rather than repeating that information here, I refer you to that video and we'll just discuss this unit. The Heathkit VTVMs did not change substantially and most models made small incremental improvements to earlier designs or just changed some of the cosmetic appearance. The V7 is notable in that it was the first Heathkit to use a printed circuit board, or as they referred to it, etched circuits. Earlier VTVMs and kits all used point-to-point -point wiring exclusively. PCVs offered a number of advantages. Faster assembly time, Heathkit claimed half the assembly time of previous VTVMs, less error-prone construction, less requirement for builders to be experienced with soldering and wiring, and a more consistent wiring layout. Apparently this change was controversial and caused a lot of discussion among Heathkit's design team at the time, which sounds surprising today, but PCBs were still uncommon in the 1950s. You can see here the PCB used a phenolic material rather than fiberglass as is usually used today. It's single-sided with no solder mask, but it does have silk screen on the top. The traces tended to lift off if overheated or soldered several times. This was likely an issue if a kit builder used a 100 watt soldering gun to assemble it. The phenolic material is more brittle than fiberglass and some builders had an issue with it cracking or breaking. In an update called the V7A, Heathkit increased the thickness of the board from 1 8th to 3 30 seconds of an inch. In retrospect, it was a good decision and most Heathkits, including their VTVMs, soon moved to using printed circuit boards. Another change introduced in this model was that the pilot lamp was relocated behind the meter rather than using a separate jeweled mounting, which reduced some cost. The design uses two tubes, a 6AL5 dual rectifier for the AC ranges and a dual 12AU7 triode for the VTVM function. It offers seven ranges of DC and AC voltage and seven ranges for resistance. Note that it cannot measure current. It has an 11 mega ohm input resistance on DC voltage. Accuracy is plus or minus 3% on DC, 5% on AC, and it maintains the AC accuracy from 42 hertz to 7.2 megahertz. The AC scale reads RMS based on a sine wave input. It also has a relative dB or decibel scale. A center zero scale can be used with the meter adjusted for zero at mid scale. The unit requires AC power and also uses one 1.5 volt C battery for the ohms function. Calibration could be done without instruments using a supplied calibrated battery or a fresh carbon zinc cell and the AC line. The biggest design change made after the V7 model was to the probe. In the V7 and earlier units, you used a direct test lead connection for AC and ohms, but for DC you used a different probe which was shielded and had an internal 1 mega ohm resistor in the probe. Later models, like this IM18, integrated this into one single test lead which had a switch for AC ohms or DC. This avoided the need for two types of leads, but you had to remember to switch it properly or you would get incorrect measurements. This unit was acquired when buying another Heathkit from a local seller on eBay. The seller said he couldn't fix it and included it at no charge. It looked quite good cosmetically and I was confident I could repair it if the meter movement was working. Further investigation showed that it had a number of issues which could all be addressed. One of these small knobs was missing. I've created some designs for 3D printing Heathkit knobs, so I made two matching small knobs using my 3D printer. The line cord was in bad shape and intermittent. I replaced it with a new cord made from a brown two-conductor extension cord. I also replaced the grommet that the cord passes through. It was missing a 12AU7 tube. Fortunately, I had a spare of this type on hand. Powering it up, there was no high voltage. It turned out that the selenium rectifier was bad. 
These are notorious for failing and can release a bad smell and toxic fumes. This unit is a little unusual as it's in a sealed case. I replaced it with a modern 1 in 4004 silicon diode. This is a change that Heathkit made in later VTVM models. It was also missing the test leads. I had some standard leads with banana jacks that I could use for DC and ohms, but for the AC input, the unit requires the shielded lead with one mega ohm resistor. I made a test lead using some coax cable, phone jack, and made a test probe using the case of a pen, soldering resistor inside. Note that the original cord inch jack would have had a larger spacing between tip and ring. These are hard to find, so I used a standard one, but it's likely not safe to use up to the full 1500 volt input rating of the original test leads. The capacitors and resistors were all within spec. I glued some loose tracks on the PCB using super glue. I then ran through the test and calibration procedure as per a copy of the manual I obtained on the internet. There was a gouge in the case that appears that someone tried to force it apart where it was welded. I suspect that someone didn't know how the case opened. I hammered it back in place. Other than that, it's in pretty good shape for a unit that's at least 60 years old. I'm always curious if I can find out anything about previous owners of Heath kits. Often it's a mystery, but this one had a stamp inside which listed the name and address of the previous owner. VO1NP, Nate Penny, St. John's, Newfoundland. A Google search indicated that Nathan Goff Penny was a well-known amateur radio operator in St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada. He served in the military and worked in radio communications and passed away in 2012 at age 91. I can only assume his equipment got sold off on eBay or some other source and somehow made its way to the seller here in Ottawa, Canada who gave it to me. The kit was well built and it even contained a battery marked new January 1986 installed June 9, 1986. So Nathan was quite conscientious. In summary, this bonus meter that acquired for nothing is now functional. While it can't compare to a modern digital multimeter for accuracy, it looks nice on the bench and it's fun to use occasionally for working on vintage equipment. It's also of historic interest as it was the first Heath kit to feature a printed circuit board. It's been some time, so I thought I would mention that I've written a book called Classic Heathkit Electronic Test Equipment, which covers Heathkit's test equipment products, starting with a brief history of Heathkit, an overview of the test equipment product lines, and tips on buying and restoring vintage test equipment from sources like eBay. Separate chapters cover the major categories component testers and substitution boxes, frequency counters, meters, oscilloscopes, power supplies, signal generators, tube testers and checkers, and miscellaneous test equipment. Each chapter includes one or more in-depth sections that look at a representative model from my Heathkit collection covering its features, operation, and notable quirks or trivia. The book's available from lulu.com and Amazon and retails for US $19.95.